So we're now moving on to looking at comparisons with carbon. And this just means uh, comparing uh, dates with either certain things or each other. So we can compare two carbon objects to each other in different ways to see if they're less than, greater than, etc, etc. So this is really handy when you are checking for certain things and we can do comparisons really, really easily. So let's start out by just creating two variables. We're going to have a new carbon instance. You can go ahead and use the carbon now or carbon tomorrow, yesterday, create, parse, any of the methods that allow you to create a new carbon date. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a second variable just called C2. This time what we're going to do is we're going to pass in say plus two days. So we now have two objects. One is the current date and time and one is in two days time. So what we can do then is we're just going to go ahead and just var dump these just so we can see the result. This will obviously be a Boolean value. We'll obviously get true or false depending on whether the result of which method we're using uh, is equal or greater than or, or whatever we want to do. So let's go ahead and first of all check out comparing if two dates are equal. So all we need to do is use the EQ method to do this. And the argument that we pass in here is the other date we want to compare. So obviously if you're not var dumping it, it's just gonna look like this. So we could go ahead and maybe put this in some kind of if statement or anything we wanted to do really, that's how that's going to work. But for now, let's just var dump it so we can see the true or false value. So we know that these two objects are not gonna be equal to each other because this one is two days into the future. So let's go ahead and check this out and we'll see a false value, obviously. We already know that was the case, but now we know that we have an equals method to check if two dates are equal or not. So now let's go ahead and use GT, which I'm sure you can work out is greater than. So we're basically checking if this is greater than this. So let's go ahead and see. And we know that the result is going to be false. If we obviously go ahead and switch these up, we'll know that C2 is greater than C, so we will see a true value here. So there's plenty of options here. You've got things like less than as well, so you can use less than. In this case, this will be false because we know, sorry, LT there, not LE. We know that this is going to be false because C2, which is two days into the future, is not less than the current date and time. So we can do also things like great, uh, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to as well, if you need that uh, control in terms of making sure they're greater than and equal to. And we also have some more, uh, not advanced, but some more interesting methods that we can use as well. And that is between. So let's say we had a third date here. Let's go ahead and call this C3 just for the sake of this. And let's put this 10 days into the future. Just remember that all these dates can obviously be custom created dates from dates from your database or you can go ahead and just create them manually, say from user input, if a user specified a year, month, and day in some kind of HTML form. So what we're going to do here then is do a var dump on whether C2 is between C and C3. So it's as easy as that. So we're making sure that this date here, or we're doing a check for this, if this date here is in between the current date and 10 days into the future. And we know that that's the case. We passed in the two arguments here, which is the first date we want to check and the second. And obviously we're using the between method here. And we know that that's going to be true because we know that two days into the future is between the current time and 10 days into the future. So really, really straightforward. So what we're gonna do now then is get rid of all of these. And we're going to look at some other methods like is weekday or is weekend, which, as you can probably imagine, are going to be really handy if you really want to check uh, the date that you're working with. So let's do a var dump again on C is weekday. And that's just a method called is weekday. Now, I'm recording this video on a Wednesday, so we should see true here because we know that Wednesday is a weekday. And we can also use weekend, as I mentioned as well. So here we'll see false. So what we can do is we can go ahead and say new carbon. And let's take a look at a method that we uh, looked at in a previous video, which is add days. 
So because it's Wednesday, if I were to add three days to this, we know that um, the this should be a weekend because uh, we'll end up on Saturday. So if we refresh, we can see true there because we've added three days to that date. So you have a tremendous amount of control uh, as well as the flexibility to use all of the methods to manipulate dates and then perform uh, comparisons. So uh, we also have other ones. You can obviously find these all in the manual. Uh, we can say things like is yesterday. Now today isn't yesterday, so we'll get a false value. But obviously, as we've seen before, we could say something like C sub day like that. And when I refresh, we get true because taking away one day, we can obviously do sub days one is going to result in that being yesterday. And as you have already probably guessed, we have is tomorrow as well. But if you want to be sort of less specific, you can say things like is future. So what we'll get here is false because the current date and time right now, which we get from just instantiating carbon is not in the future. But again, we can go ahead and say C add day. So we're going to add one day to this and we go and get true. That will be uh, the case for any uh, date in the future. And again, pretty straightforward. We also have is past as well. So that is how we do comparisons of dates within carbon, which is going to be really useful if you do need to do any checking of dates that have either been passed into your application or you're retrieving from another source.